Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is tips number 573, and it's entitled Cutting a Rack on the Horizontal Mill, and I'll be using the Clausing Mill. Now, in the previous video, I cut a rack just like this on the Bridgeport Mill, and this is somewhat of a repeat, although it's all being done on a horizontal mill, which really is the more sensible machine to do it on, and I think you'll enjoy this, so stay with me. There are a total of four and even five videos in this series on rack and pinion, so be sure and check all of them out when they're available. In the previous video, I said to you that I do not have a gear gauge, but in fact I do. I have two of them, and these are from my buddy Bruce Witham in uh, Australia. He's down under. This one is metric, this is imperial, but Take an unidentified gear such as this one and just keep trying it here and in this case it goes right into the 16 pitch, 16 to metro pitch. So it's that simple to identify a gear. But you might need both of these if you have a modern piece of equipment it might very well be a metric gear. And just a couple of other things to cover before we go out to the milling machine. This is the arbor that I made, and that's shown in another video, so that it would hold these cutters which have only a 5 8 bore. So the the regular arbor that I have on the machine is a 1 inch and that would not work. So I did make this and made a video of it as well. And these are my dimension cards, and I talked about these in the other video, and we only need really two dimensions to cut this uh, rack and one is the linear pitch which is 0.157 and the other is the depth of the tooth which is 0 0.108. While perusing Machinery's handbook look at the chart that I discovered. It's entitled Indexing Movements for Cutting Rack Teeth on the Milling Machine. If you're not in the mood for doing math or using formulas, use this chart. And all you got to do here is find the dimensional pitch, and we know that it's 20 right there. And look, linear or circular pitch is 157 thousandths. Does that sound familiar? All right, let's go to work. This is the rack that I made the other day on the bridge port, and this is the blank that I'll be cutting on the horizontal mill. So let's go on out to the garage. Alright, I'm out in the other shop now at the Clausing Horizontal Mill and the setup is pretty well complete. The cutter is mounted on my new arbor. The workpiece, half inch square stock, is in the Kurt vise, and that's about a five inch long piece. The first thing I'll do is set the depth of the tooth, which is 108 thousandths. So I'll put a piece of tape on the work and just touch off, zero out the knee crank graduated dial, and raise it 108 thousandths. All right, here we go. Okay, I've touched the tape. Now I backed off to clear the work and I will raise the knee, the table, the work by 108 thousandths. Before I start cutting, take note now, again that blank is uh, 5 inches long and I'm starting uh, with my first cut down at this end and there's not a whole lot of clearance there, right in here, or this would hit this the support here and I did oil that bearing by the way so I'm down to the depth and then my first cut it doesn't really matter where it is but I'm moving in a little bit so that I take up the backlash then I will set the collar here to zero and then for reference, remember, remember that the linear pitch is 157 thousand. So each time I'll turn that 157. There is no digital readout on this machine. A fella could use a dial indicator, uh, either a mechanical one or electronic, and that would work fine also. But I'm just going to use 
the dials. That's the way that it was done for a hundred years anyway, so it'll work. The RPM is about 150. And make sure you run the cutter in the correct rotation so you do not ruin it. And now the last two. Well, that's it, and you can see why the uh, length of the rack is determined by uh, obstructions here and it would just about hit this end of the uh, the arbor and that's a five incher so I would say five inch is probably the maximum that I could cut on this little closing mill 
Let's take it out and examine it. Well, there it is. And you can see that I actually used a, a piece of scrap for this. Because there's teeth on both sides. A double rack, I guess. All right, I'll clean it off and we'll go down the basement and, and uh, examine it. Well, I deburred it, cleaned it off real well, and it looks good. It matches up with the other one. I do not have a pinion yet in order to, uh, to check it. One little ding here. I just got to give you a disclaimer. Where the heck is that little ding? Anyway, there was a little bit of a peck of a drill mark in this when I started. This is used material. Well, now you know how to cut a rack on a horizontal mill and you know the limitations. That's about the length. I just said that while we were outside. I wish I'd have started with a better piece of stock, but it doesn't matter. This is the one I will use in the final episode. Now the following video will be on making the pinion, so be sure and watch that. That will be done on the Bridgeport Mill using a dividing head. Success, I think. Leave a comment, a like, ring the bell, and all that good stuff if you're so inclined. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now, and I'll see you next time. There are a total of four and even five videos in this series on rack and pinion, so be sure and check all of them out when they're available.